morning, Bridgeway. You guys look fabulous. You just do. Well, I'm really excited to be able to share what God has laid on my heart this morning with you. So during this time, I just ask that we journey together, that we're going to be on this adventure because we're kingdom family. I want to start with a prayer. Will you pray with me? Awesome Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the families in this room. Father God, I pray that you are close to the brokenhearted. I love that you are. I love that we can come and we can celebrate Sometimes days like today can be bittersweet. God, lead us well. Remind us how loved, how valued, and how seen we are. Holy Spirit, come. Rest upon these families. Rest upon your kingdom family and remind us. In Jesus' name, amen. When we are more familiar with the dark than the light, what then? Our eyes, our outlook, the lens we have is distorted, dimmed, clouded. Can one become so comfortable with the dark that the light seems dangerous, threatening, strange, foreign? We could even go so far as to believe that to step into the light could be the end of us. An irrational fear that renders the children of God, sons and daughters of the Most High God, captive, lost and spinning, confused, bumbling in the dark. grasping for freedom and praying for rescue, but all the while they are entrusted with the message of light. We are the light. Not to just illuminate our lives, but to be a beacon of hope, shining the way for all. My husband, Wes, he loves caves. He loves caves so much, he packs a bag, takes four sources of light, and tries to get as far as he can inside that cave with me. Yeah. Uh, Me, on the other hand, I could care less if I am ever in a cold, dark, wet place of any kind. Not exactly my idea for vacation. He always assures me, babe, it's only just, it's for a few minutes. I know cave tours are at least an hour. (laughs) I know why. Because we go to Current River every year, and every year I am fully aware I am probably going to end up in a cave. And it's a family thing. The kids are like, yeah, mom, come on. And I'm like, okay, here we go. I'm like mustering up all the courage I've got. I'm like, I don't care to see another pile of back guano. I don't care to see like stalactites and stalagmites. It's really cool, but I saw it. I saw it last year and the year before. So we're on this cave tour last year, and, you know, the tour guide comes. He's a ranger. He's super informative and educated, and, I mean, he's going to tell us. And we end up going into the cave. He points out everything, and um, we get to this one one place, and he's like, hey, guys, check this out. Everybody's like, ooh, cool, cool. And he's like, check out these cave salamanders. And I'm like, ooh. You know, and he's like, Their eyes have adapted. Over time, they have become so familiar with the dark. This place where they learn how to survive, that their eyes develop this like film, like skin over them. That they no longer have use for eyes created to see. 
Everybody's like, ooh, that's awesome. And I'm like, that's awful. <laughs> that is awful. They have eyes created to see. But yet, they, they've like hung out in the dark so long, they've got blinders and don't even realize it. Okay, so maybe I'm over-empathizing with this cave salamander. And then we go further into the cave. And we get to this kind of wide open room, which in a cave, there is nothing that's wide and open. And he's like, and the, cave, the tour guide, he tells us, go ahead, turn off all your sources of light. No. Just to see how dark is dark. I believe you. No need to turn off the lights. <laughs> and uh, the lights go out. And in my mind's eye, I am frantically, you know, almost how you're like trying to almost rebel against it. Like, I'm going to see light. I'm going to see something. <laughs> and there is nothing. It is super dark. And in just that moment, fear creeps in. I know it's only 30 seconds. But it was super scary. And it took me just, just a moment to think this. And then, of course, when the lights came on, my mouth said it really loud. I'm not created for this. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 105. Psalms 119 is one of the longest chapters in the Bible. This psalm is about, is one of a dozen alphabetic acrostic poems. It's 176 verses that are divided in 22 stanzas, and each stanza represents a letter in the Hebrew alphabet. There's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, so each stanza represents a letter. I looked deeper into this, and I, I found out that it was quite possible that Hebrew children learn their alphabet this way. They learn their alphabet right alongside the Word of God. They encountered the Word of God, what He was saying to them and about them, an ongoing message speaking their story early. They learn God's laws are perfect, reviving the soul. Precepts and rules are right. Giving joy to the heart, commands are radiant, giving light to the eyes, decrees are trustworthy, making wise the simple, and ordinances are sure and altogether righteous. These precepts, rules, commands, decrees, and ordinances, the very word of God exists not for oppression's sake, but for freedom's. I want to say that again. The very word of God exists not for oppression's sake, but for freedoms. And these children learned it early on. Run wild in the laws and commands, ordinances and precepts. How amazing is that? When I learned my alphabet, I learned a lot about letter people. <laughs> Mr. M with the munchy mouth. I think about that. What if my language was attached? When I learned to speak, when I learned to communicate, was attached to the word of God. And there are themes that cannot be ignored. Over and over throughout Psalms 119, this author had a life acquainted with sorrow and persecution. Darkness tried to shadow his world but every time clinging to, hoping in, remembering what God breathes sustain this traveler on his journey of life. Jesus was, he was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering, familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their face. He was despised. And we held him in low esteem. But Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. 
but be encouraged. For I have won the battle over the world. The very light of heaven shining, calling us out of darkness into a new story, penned by the hand of God, exhaled from his very lips, purposed and on mission to speak the language of heaven on earth. If you hear nothing else today, please hear these words. There is a way out. You are not to be left in the dark about your own story. Do you have eyes that see? We all have a first language. And I'm not talking about words or letters. We have a first language of family. Who is in? Who isn't? Tradition. Obligation. Blood. Dysfunction. Home. We have a first language of relationships. Romance. Codependency. Friendship. Betrayal. We have a first language of parenting. Respect. Yelling. Estrangement. Adoption. And we have a first language. And we learn these first language. We learn this. How? It's what we've inherited or is currently being inherited. It's what we've experienced or we're still experiencing. All behavior is a form of communication. And behavior is a direct result of the language we speak. When others read you, what are you consistently and constantly speaking? Is it an epic adventure with twists and turns or a tragic saga with a hopeless ending? Is it a captivating piece that you just cannot put down? Or a predictable one that anyone can easily pen? The author of Psalms 119 testifies, calls out to the reader, not from a place of this is what you should do. No, from a place of this is what I've done and I've encountered the living God and it is well with my soul. It's an ongoing, the word is an ongoing conversation pulling us deeper into the knowledge of who God is and what he is speaking into our life. God is not hidden to someday be revealed. Throughout the word, he is exposed and radiant and calling out to his children. Do you have eyes that see? If the word of God is our story, my story, your story, and we do not know this language, then are we left in the dark? If the word of God is not our first language, then are we estranged from the light? Believing a lie with like a film, skin-like blinders on, eyes created to see, eyes created to see. Speaking the language of fear. I should be allowed to be the author of my own story. It's my life. This book, the Bible, it's just trying to get me to be something I'm not. I can never live up to it. Nobody's perfect. I'm just human. How many laws and precepts and ordinances or whatever, how many is actually in there? I don't need another rule book. I 
Authority makes me cringe. Love the law? I don't even like the word rule. I don't like to read. I'm not a reader. It's not fair. You know, I wish somebody would just like write me directions on how this thing, you know, this life should play out. See, the language of fear creeps in. It twists and perverts, casting shadows to distort and smoke screens to paralyze. The language of fear is taught when behavior modification is the end goal and the heart is left isolated to nurse unhealed wounds. When authority is misused to intimidate and abuse and control instead of lifting up and releasing and encouraging. When we listen to the enemy spewing lies that God withholds his best. And we will just never be enough. We will always be left out, unloved and abandoned, failures at best. And in the dark, all we can see is our past. All we can see is our past. Isn't that evidence enough? And the voices I hear strangely sound. I used to be able to recognize when the enemy spoke. I used to be able to hear lies coming, but all I can see is my past. And now those voices sound like mine, yours. In the dark, voices are amplified. Images are distorted. Time is obsolete and fear is so thick. The enemy wants nothing more than to get us to think like him and to speak his language of hopelessness, hate and despair. And to make matters worse, pass it on generation to generation to generation as if there is no way out. There is a way out. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The very word of God is meant not only for you to encounter, to read, to behold with your eyes, but to also have it engraved in your heart. It is meant to illuminate your path so you can trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him, Christ, in all your ways, for he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. He is a trailblazer, illuminating the path right out of the dark, and it's like a fire trail. He is to make your path straight, not scary. I'll stride freely through wide open spaces as I look for your truth and your wisdom. So, my little cave salamander had no clue he was in the dark. And I don't think he really cared. He was operating on instinct and survival mode, fight or flight mentality. His belly was full and his eyes were shut. We see this all the time in nature. Creatures adapting to survive, instinctual, dependent on fight or flight. And I pitied him. Because I don't want to live my life that way. I've been there. More familiar with the dark than the wide open spaces God had designed for me to run in. See, I believe the lie that the dark, I had more space to move and run and be free. But actually it's in the light. 
in the light of your creator who loves you fiercely. And we are not created to merely adapt to the dark. We are created to overcome it. We are not created to merely adapt to the dark, but we are created to overcome it. John 1, 5. I love this. Everything was created through him. Nothing, not one thing came into being without him. What came into existence was life. And the life was life, was light to live by. The life light blazed out of the darkness. Trailblazer. The darkness couldn't put it out overcame it overcome it how awesome and just how dark is dark genesis 1 for this god created the heavens and earth all you see and all you don't see earth was a soup of nothingness a bottomless emptiness an inky blackness that's dark And God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. And he spoke unto creation, let there be light. Do you know he's still, I think of Zephaniah 317, when he sings over us, he dances over us, he rejoices over us. The spirit of God moves above and among his children. What dark places are you withholding back? For he today is calling unto you, let there be light. Let there be light. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Amen. But will have life light of life jesus made a way where there was no way he endured the cross for us to restore us to reconcile us to become everything we are created to be everything he hung on the cross and when we embrace grace we are empowered empowered to change our mind to be able to pick up the word of god and encounter what he is saying he's speaking to us we no longer have to have chapters of regret and chaos chapters that are dark but we begin to have chapters of value, chapters of worth, chapters of against all odds, those kind of chapters. And those, te- those chapters are testifying. They testify as we are read by all men. They cry out, call out, not this is what you should do, but this is what I've done and it is well with my soul. Do you have eyes to see? Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. After Jesus ascended into heaven, he rose, conquering hell, death, and the grave. And he told them, I must go for the one who is greater than I will come. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Who is the promise? The Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. Acts 2. When the Feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. There's about 120 of them. And without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, a gale force. 
No one could tell where it was coming from. It filled the whole building. And then like wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks. And they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. You see, it was the time of Pentecost feast, so there was travelers from all over. And what happened was the promise came because God is faithful to his word. And the Holy Spirit, like a gale force wind, went through them and ignited them. And I began to think tongues of fire. Okay, tongues of fire, above their head, sounds kind of strange. Not exactly getting this, like physical tongue. What does that look like? And I looked at a candle. They were human candles. Set ablaze with the gospel. And they begin to speak in languages they've never spoke before. Empowered. Not just their first language, but another tongue. The tongue of heaven. And it was the gospel to further the message that there is hope. That there is awesome hope. And that you're a part of that. That you're a child of the Most High God. That you don't have to keep repeating what generation after generation after generation has done. For your story is a captivating one. Your story is an epic adventure. That you can run free and wild. Because God's laws are not to confine and oppress. But they are to elevate, to lift up. They are heavenly. Heaven on earth. And I get so excited about this. Can you imagine? The very breath, the spirit, the power of God igniting men and women. Let there be light, setting them ablaze to testify, not in their first language. But the tongue of heaven, the word, Jesus, the gospel, the good news. They were entrusted with a message of light. And this story illuminated not only their lives, but it shone bright in the darkness. And it is still shining today, calling us out. Do you have eyes that see? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I want to encourage you. You are created to speak a heavenly language. And when you peer into the word of God, you are beholding the very heart of God, the lover of your soul. Allow the Holy Spirit to interpret what God is speaking unto you. You are created for this. You were created to run wild and free in the light, not in the dark, not in shame, not in regret, not in guilt, not in oppression, but freedom and healing in life. And you are created to pass it on. Isn't that incredible? So I'm going to ask you guys, if you would stand with me. We're gonna worship and I love this song because it's like it's your breath in our lungs it's you God you that ignites our way and if there's anyone in here that doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior you're still clinging to your pen and you're like I'm not gonna give it up I guess I don't know what will happen I trust in the Lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding Acknowledge him in all your ways. He will illuminate your path. He is your trailblazer. He is for you, not against you. He sees you so loved, so valued. And if you're like, I want to be a human candle. I want the very presence of God, the Holy Spirit, to dwell in my life. Say that to him. He's listening. The altar is open if you want to come and worship up here or pray with someone. Or if you just want to acknowledge him at your seats. That's okay too. So our God is so good. He's so good. You give life to our love. You bring light to 
the darkness you give hope you restore every heart that is broken great are you pressure to give. This service is a gift to you. If you could fill out on your connection card, I want to remind you. If you would like more information, or if you're like, you know what? I've said yes to Jesus. Please mark that down. We want to personally connect with you. want you to know that you're a part of a kingdom family and you don't have to go this alone. So ushers, if you could please pass the buckets. I would like to remind you that Merge is back at Market Heights campus at 6.30. And I love this. We have some amazing, amazing teens. If you're a teen in the room, I would love to see you. 
Also, if you're interested in serving in Bridge Kids, make sure you find myself or Miss Cassie or Miss Jessica. We would love for you to join our team because we just love to teach the language of heaven early. Feel free to be dismissed. In just a moment, I'm going to say a prayer for you, but then you can go or you can stay and you can worship. I love this song. (laughs) So let me say a blessing over you. Awesome Heavenly Father, thank you. I ask that you bless them and you keep them. You be gracious to them. Lift up your face, your countenance upon them. Remind them how loved and how valued and how seen they are. I love that you love us fiercely. Bless them and give them peace. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh